Hello, hello again, everybody. Zach Attack is here with my UFC 183 review for Super Saturday, January the 31st, 2015, and of course, the third pay, a second pay per view this year from UFC. Fourth overall event, if you include the Fox Sports events for 2015 tonight, taking place from the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. Of course, we saw the anticipated return of Anderson the Spider Silva, who, in my mind, should fight one more time before he gets another shot at the title. That's my opinion. And uh, speaking of my opinion, my opinion, most recent UFC events until tonight have mostly been kind of been disappointing me lately. The last three events, UFC 182, the and the last UFC fight nights on Fox, the Silver and Gus, Silver and uh, McGregor, and also the Gustafson Johnson fights, fight nights. The, the last three events went the same way. The first four fights sucked in the pay-per-view. And the main event was the only good part. It's the same thing in the TV. The first three fights sucked. The main event was the only good part of the entire damn card. Tonight was the opposite. The first three fights tonight were amazing. But the best main card on the card in a long time. The first three fights were... They contain stuff I've been waiting to see from UFC in a long time in a pay-per-view or Fox Sports Fight Night, etc. Exciting fights. I always say it through my pay-per-view reviews that UFC's been lacking excitement. Decent action, but not a lot of excitement. And these three fights provided excitement. Three great back-and-forth fights and great fin great endings. Well, the cold man and man, eh, they were like to call Fight Night to Lose fights. We've been seeing a lot more fight not to lose fights in the last couple of pay per views. Once again, for those who are new to my reviews, a fight not to lose fight is when two guys just dance around the ring for three or five rounds, don't hit each other much. That was the cold man and most of the man. But like I said, UFC still got a long way to go for being a total consistent card, but overall, this is probably the best card in a while. With instead of like one out of five being awesome, three out of five were awesome. These are halfway there. Uh, I gave this a 7.0. I gave the last pay-per-view a 6.5. But I gave this one 7.0 on the strength of the three first three fights. Because just on the strength of those three great fights, the first three fights. And let's kick off with those three, shall we? Kicking off first off in the World Trade Division. We had, of course, Thiago Alves taking on Jordan Mine. And this is a great way to open up the card. Great, exciting fight to kick it off, especially the way it ended. With Jordan Mine looking really good in the very first round. Getting some great shots and including almost getting Jago Elvis knocked out. He, he had him rocking. He had him wheeling. He just couldn't finish it. He couldn't get Diago down. He was rocked, you know, and he survived the first round. And Elvis knew he lost that first round. And he almost lost the fight completely after getting almost knocked out. Well, Elvis put on a tremendous comeback in the second round. Being more aggressive in the second round and eventually getting the comeback win after a vicious body kick to the chest, knocked down Jordan Mine, he got the victory. Very uh, exciting comeback from Diago Evans after getting this close to getting knocked out in the first round. Great comeback from Diago Evans. Great way to open up the card and best opening card. This is the best opening fight to a main card in a long time. The last couple of events, like I've been saying, the last couple of events have been kind of been inconsistent when it comes to. Having more than one good fight. Like I said, there's three of them. And they're all in a row. Uh, I will give this one a 3.2. Uh, actually, yeah, 3.3. 3.3 .3 out of 5. Because it was just a great, exciting fight to open up the card. And like I said, finally. Last couple of fights you've seen. Fights that had decent action, but not much excitement. Like I said, these three first three fights, starting with this one. There was decent action and great excitement. He was close to being knocked down, and of course, a comeback victory for Thiago Evans. So there you go. Next up, in the middleweight division, we have Dale's Ladies taking on Tim Bush. It was almost like the uh, first fight, kind of, but it was a great, another great fight to uh, keep keep momentum going. And uh, great, great first round, very back and forth again. Very like the first three fights, you guys, you guys mostly were striking, great striking tonight. Usually it's like, mostly I say about pay-per-view fights, you have great striking, but not exciting striking. So decent striking, but it was great striking and exciting because it was close calls, some great shots, especially in the first round with 
attempt down attempt, but Bosch almost had uh, Teo's ladies down because he, like the first round of the first fight, Bosch had Teo's rocked. He had him down, but instead of continuing pounding on him, he went for a submission attempt, but that failed. And then the second round, another great excitement fight uh, round. Great striking, great. It was a very intense fight. And all of these fights were really good. The first three. And, uh, then, like, ladies put the comeback. Not as exciting as, uh, not as exciting as, uh, Alves's comeback, but still a great comeback from, uh, Dale's ladies comeback with some big, nasty kicks. And, of course, getting a submission in the end of the second round. It was technical because he got, he got both down with a takedown and he had a side control choke in. Bosch never really tapped out. He passed out. Even though uh, you saw Dale's his foot on the cage. I don't know if that's legal or not in UFC, but still. Foot on the cage or not, Dale's ladies got the victory in the second round submission. I'll give this one a 3.0 on the fight. Not as exciting as the first fight, but still. As exciting. Because really good. Uh, my favorite fight of the first three fights, though, was the third fight. In the lightweight division with L. Iaquinta taking on one of my faves, Joe Lo Joe Loza. And this fight was I was I I've seen Joe Loza before. He's one of my favorite guys. You know, I've seen him fight before numerous times. I think I might have seen Al a couple times, but this fight was just as intense as the first two. Continuing the trend, continuing momentum shift from the first two fights being as exciting. This was another exciting fight. You know, and these two guys were just slugging. There's a lot of slug pests. Not a lot of takedowns in these fights. Mostly striking. And very effective and very exciting striking. In all of these fights. And, uh... It was... The first round was very close. You know, the first round, they were both evenly matched. You know, both evenly matched in the first round. You know, both guys have some good shots in, some great takedown attempts, and really exciting action with, uh, like I said, Joe Lawson almost had a submission attempt, but I created a reverse dead, great reversal there, and like I said, this is a great first round. And then the second round was as good as the second, second round was as good as the first round, a little bit more exciting, as uh, Eric Quinta really took the uh, second round, and... Once Alec Cranta got that big shot in on Lozon, it was all done with the crying. Alec Cranta just kept on punching Lozon. When he got that first big shot in, bang, he just stopped walking and punching all over Lozon. But Lozon didn't go down. He wouldn't go down. Alec Cranta just kept punching him. He was like a fucking human punching bag, punching bag for the last minute, minutes or so of the second round. Alec Cranta just kept going at him, just kept warring the punches. And, Al and he, Lozon would not go down. And since he wasn't defending himself, even though he never go down, he was defenseless, basically. Because he was just getting pummeled by these punches from Al Quinta. Which finally led the referee to stop the fight in the second round. Three second round stoppage tonight. Usually, I remember the last fight night, yet three out of the four fights ended in the first. So it's great to see second round stoppage for once. And really good ones. And really exciting ones. So Al Quinta looked really good. Both guys looked good in this fight. But Al Quinta got the victory. With that great TKO victory after just pummeling over Lozon. Lozon never gave up and he had a great fight too. But he just was the fences out there. He was just getting rocked for Ad Critter. He wouldn't go down. But he just was getting his ass kicked. And I'm glad the referee stopped before any permanent damage happened to Jolo. So we go a uh, 3.5. Like I said, my favorite fight of the uh, of the of the three fights that were really good. The best one for me, personally, was Ali and Kreta. And Joe Lozon, really good fight. Now on to the not as good portion of the card, but still. At least the undercard stole the show for once. You know, usually it's the main events who've been the only good part of the card. But this time around, the first three fights were really good. So there you go. Now on to the core main. We have Kevin Calstium taking on Tyler Woodley. Now, of course, the core main had a little bit of controversy going into it. Now, a lot of people went, a couple of people went overweight. Didn't make weight uh, during the weigh-ins. And surprisingly, Nick Diaz, who was mostly MIA for most of the week until he arrived at last on Wednesday evening, 
he did not go overweight. He he did make the weight, but two guys did not make weight. Uh, one guy in the prelims, John Lineker, who ended up winning his fight, though. I didn't see the prelims. I just saw the main card. That's what I always do to these reviews. I always review the main card only, not the prelims, if anyone's wondering. Uh, I did see a little bit of Misha Tate and Seven Man fight. Looked decent to me. Uh, a little bit of controversy there. Because of the judging, but still. I mean, who knows? But the story, I heard a little bit about it. But uh, going back to the uh, two guys that didn't make weight. Uh, John Lineker and uh, Kevin Gastiam. Especially Galvin, who weighed in 10 pounds overweight. Making it a catchweight fight. And forcing both Calvin and John Lineker to go up a weight class after the ninth fight. So John Lineker will no longer be a flyweight. He'll be a bantamweight. And after the night, Calvin Cassian will no longer be a welterweight. He'll be a bantamweight. So, catchweight division, like I said, I will really take it on Calvin Cassian. And after those three amazing, excellent, exciting fights, uh, this is kind of an underwhelming one after the, after the first three being so exciting and good. It was still pretty good, but it was like what I had to call a fight not to lose fight. A fight not to lose fight, like I said, is when two guys just go in there for three minutes, don't hit each other, just move, move and duck, don't hit each other, don't hit each other much, and mostly dance. Dance around, don't hit each other much. And don't care about entertaining the fans. You don't want to lose money. And that's what this fight was. But it was okay in comparison to the other three fights. It was still decent. It was, like I said, it's not as exciting, but still. It was okay. Uh, with Like, the first round went to uh, Gassium, for sure. It was kind of looked more aggressive in the first round, even if it didn't look like anyone was being aggressive. But the second round definitely belonged to uh, Dymo Orly. He had some okay shots in. He had some decent shots in, though. You know? And then you had uh, the third round was okay. Like, Gassium was more somewhat aggressive, but then Woodley came back alive a little bit. You know, it's just okay. With Iron Woodley getting the split decision. Now, I've been noticing this lately. Fights like this have happened a lot. When these guys don't fight, don't they just dance around and don't butt each other much. You mostly been seeing these and in split decisions. Like fights like Bader and Phil Davis from last Saturday and Benson Henderson and Don Sawoni. Those fights when guys just don't hit each other much, where there's not a lot of action. There's mostly split decisions, and that's what we've been seeing lately from these fight not the least fights. Because it was kind of too close to score because these guys didn't do much. And Tyler Woodley's ranked in the top five. In my mind, he does not deserve a championship fight against uh, Mr. Robbie Lola until he gets another dominant victory. Because I see all these guys, I've said this a couple times by UFC reviewers, that I see guys who going to be number one contenders who don't deserve it because the performance that got them the number one position was not a dominant performance. They needed a better performance before they get a title shot. And that's what I think Tyrone really needs to do. As we're a silver, which I'll get to in a second. So that's my opinion. Tyrone really did get the victory. He looked okay tonight. But in my mind, he doesn't deserve a title shot quickly. He needs another good match. He needs a more dominant performance. Because that's what happened with uh, Wami Lawler. When he lost the match against Hendrix the first time, his first fight after losing to Hendrix, it wasn't a dominant performance. He won the fight, but it wasn't dominant. It wasn't exciting. It didn't show that he's ready for another shot against Hendrix. But then the second fight after he came back, he was more dominant, and it proved a lot more than the first fight he had when he came back. And that second fight was the fight that won him the rematch against Hendrix, and he won. So that's what they should happen with Woodley. His next fight should be the fight when he really shows what he's got and he looks really dominant and then he gets a title shot. Not on this performance. He does not deserve a title shot on this performance. And it gets a 2.3. It's just because it wasn't as exciting as the other two. The other three fights. But still, it's just okay. But like I said, Tyron Woodley's on his way up to be a decent star in the World 3 division, but he doesn't deserve a title shot just yet. He needs another better dominant performance. He should not like I said, he should not get a title shot on this performance because he wasn't dominant. Because it was a split decision. Now, on to the very anticipated main event in the middleweight division. We have, of course, the return of Anderson, the Spider Silva, 
egg on the avocado and shoe body as we saw tonight, Nick Diaz. A lot of people had a lot of questions concerning Silva as he returned to the ring tonight, the octagon, for the first time in 13 months since that devastating and heartbreaking and gross leg injury he suffered during his last fight against Weidman. How ironic that when Silva comes back, Weidman got injured again. For the third time in less than a couple months, Weidman pulled out of the fight against uh, Bill Ford, which forces one of the Rousey's fight against Gat Sagano to be the main event at UFC 184. But that's the next preview. When it comes to Silva, like I said, a lot of questions being answered. A lot of questions need to be answered in this fight. Is Silva going to be the same? Was he ever going to be the same coming out of that leg injury? How's his mobility? How's his striking? Well, we got a little bit answered tonight. Uh, fight at the loose fight again the cold man in the main event. Uh, back in the day, I was always bitching about Silva. I called him a pussy sometimes because Silva just danced around for five rounds. Especially when he was champion, he just danced around. and That's how he lost the tide in the first place. To Wyman, he pussy danced, and then when he wasn't, when he was trying to dance, like, come in me, Wyman, come in, bang, he got fucking caught. When he tried to do his pussy dancing, he got fucking caught by Wyman. And he still was pussy dancing. That was because Diaz was so, like, if you saw Nick Diaz, he was like, shit talking the entire fight. He was like, come on, bitch, come on, bitch. And he laid down, and he was like, doing all these funny dance moves, kind of dance, out there in silver. Feeling more like a dancing contest than a fight. And a little bit of striking. That's what I call fight at the loose fights. A lot more dancing than striking. But the striking we did see from Silva proved that Silva does need a couple more fights before he deserves another shot against Weidman. I've been saying, that, I've been talking with this with my friend for months, that Silva should get a couple fights in before he deserves a shot against Weidman because he's not ready. Even Silver admits he's not ready for another shot against Whiteman just yet. He needs a couple more fights in. And I think he was kind of being, like I call him a pussy for being cautious. He was, I think he was purposely cautious because it was his first fight in 12 months. And he wanted to see how it felt to be back in the cage again. He didn't see how his body would feel. And could he survive another fight without getting injured. And he, he had some decent shots in. You know, he still got some striking in. But he's still far from being the spider we all knew in luck. It's like I said, he's still recovering. You know, it may take time for Silva to be the spider we all knew in love. The fast dominant spider. If he was fast and dominant, he would have fucking knocked out Diaz in the first round. But it went all five rounds. You know, and Diaz, he did back it up a little bit. He didn't try to strike it. So, but it was no chill sudden, let me tell you. He was no chill sudden coming at him. You know, Chael Sonnen, I've said this before in my previous UFC reviews as well, Chael Sonnen was the only guy that really, in my mind, took it to Silva. He was the only guy that was aggressive to Silva and really beat the shit out of Silva until Silva got that surprise submission in the fifth round. He was close to losing. That was the closest he ever got to losing the title until I didn't beat him. So, there was Anderson Silva winning. But like Taiwan, it wasn't a dominant performance. You know, it's just an okay fight. You know, and let me say, it wasn't an exciting fight. It was kind of fun because they were like being playful and stuff. You know, with Diaz being a cocky little bastard, being the one of us showboarding and fucking dancing. Because Silva does it a lot, but it was just okay. It was not as exciting as the first three fights, but still. For D for Silva to come back at all, it's an achievement in itself. That's why when Silva won, he was overjoyed, he was elated. Just the fact he came back in general is a victory for him. Just getting the win in the fight was at it was an added bonus. It was just a relief for Silva to say, "Okay, I'm back." But when it comes to being back in tip top original form, he's far from it. Like I said, Silva needs another fight or two. I've been ta I talked with a friend named Alfonso, and Alfonso and I went back and forth about why we think Silva should get should not get an automatic rematch if he beats Diaz. And you saw it tonight. He's far from being in championship shape. He does need another fight or two. For one, for two reasons. One, to prove that his fight win over his win over Diaz was no fluke. And two, and very most important why he needs another fight or two before fighting Whiteman, uh, he needs a more dominant performance. 
you know, he looked really good tonight, but it was kind of too close. Because they didn't hit each other much, Silva and Diaz. You know, not a lot of action, not a lot of punches. A lot of, a lot of showboarding, a lot of dancing. Which could be purposely cautious by, purposely done by Silva. Because like I said, he was testing the waters. He hadn't fought in 13 months. He wanted to make sure how good he felt. You know, and well, Billy was okay. You know, he was limping a little bit, but I think the leg is strong. He had some good leg kicks. You, know, you didn't see him wince when he was doing those leg kicks. Which is how he got injured in the first place. To see him do those leg kicks again it was very interesting to see him do those leg kicks, especially that's how he got injured against Whiteman. He did a leg kick and his leg bent back in a gross way. But to see him do the leg kicks again and still be walking is an accomplishment. Like I said, it's an accomplishment in itself. It's, an, it's a victory. It's a personal victory for Silva, at least being back in the cage at all. So it's a personal victory. But when it comes to professional victory, he needs more dominant victories to get a shot against Whiteman. Like I said, he's very close. He's not even close, like I said. He should, in my mind, he should face, he should face one, he's supposed to be ranked number one. He didn't look like the number one, but contender to me. He should face Waco next, or Machina next, or Sakura Souza, even though Silva doesn't want to face any of his countrymen, but he may have to fight, he may have to bite his tongue and bite him. Because they're in the top five, he needs them. And it. And the other reason why I think he didn't want to be dominant. Uh, Diaz is on weight. Why would Sue want to knock out a guy who's not even ranked in the top 10? That wouldn't get him anywhere. He knew knocking out Diaz would do nothing. It was just a showing. Ranked in the top 10. That's why I think Silva's next fight should be against a top 5 guy. Like like I said, Wacord or Machida. Uh, or Sakura. And be more dominant. You know, once we see Silver fight, maybe one or two more fights, and have more dominant victories, where he just blows the other guy out of the wall and knocks him the fuck out, like the old Silver, when he starts looking like the old Silver again in his next couple fights, Danny deserves another shot against Whiteman. That's why I think he should not get an automatic rematch immediately. Because you see, he's far from deserving another shot against Whiteman. He needs more. He needs to get back in the ring more. And really wants stuff that ring wants. You know? Uh, 2.5. You know? A little bit better than Kobe, but still. At least, like I said, it's a personal victory for Silva. To at least come back at all is an achievement and a victory for in itself. But in my mind, for Silva to get another shot against my man, he needs maybe one or two more wins and more dominant victories. You know, that's why he needs more dominant performances. You know? He was feeling it out tonight. Galvin, he knows that he can fight again. He looked decent for what it was, for what it's worth, for all of his shots he did tonight. He did look decent on his striking. He was more cautious and more patient with his striking. But his striking was decent. But now that he knows that he can fight again, now he knows he can be more dominant. Now he knows he can have a more dominant first round knockout victory in the future. So there you go with that. My thoughts. On UFC 183 for Super Saturday, once again, 7.0 out of 10 uh, for my overall review. review. Uh, I'm always busy. I'm a disc jockey and all, and usually I DJ on Saturday, so I miss, I miss a lot of UFC pay-per-views. Mostly winter, I'm not too busy, but I am going to be missing uh, UFC 184. I'm not going to make a review for that because I'm busy. I'm going to a concert that night. So I'm going to miss the new main event of Wanda Rousey against Gat Sagano. That was, of course, promoted to the co promoted from co-main to main last night on Friday after Weidman got injured yet again. It's like I said, the third time that Weidman and Belfort has been postponed. Even Belfort denied an interim title fight against Machida, opting to wait for Weidman's recovery because he doesn't want to risk another book at tenorship if he loses. He saw that when the goose have said he wears his number one position. And now Alan Anthony Rumble Jones is now number one contender after his dominant victory over Gustafsson in Sweden last week. So they ain't going with that. So I, won't, so I missed that card. So once again, that is it for my UFC 183 review. 7.0 out of 10. With that in mind, y'all been attacked by the review from Zach. Thank you very much. See you all later. And, uh, there will be a Super Bowl review tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. And uh, go Seahawks. See ya. Yeah.